So here is an interesting little project for, uh, well, it's going to be for this week. It's going to take a, a few installments. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and get started. What we've got here is a uh, standard cheap four-foot fluorescent work light that I had here in my shop. I've had it for at least ten years. I forget how much I paid for it, but I don't think it was more than ten bucks. I think it was nine ninety-five, uh, including the fluorescent tubes. Uh, this light has worked fine, but I've had to replace the ballast in it once now, and the ballast in it is not working well uh, at this time, uh, and uh, it takes a long time to warm up, and I've never really been a big fan of fluorescent tubes. Now, I'm, I am a fan of saving money and saving energy. I am no greeny weeny by any chance, means, but uh, uh, I, I don't like wasting energy. Uh, so, uh, the fluorescent tubes were the best choice at the time. Uh, and now, uh, the ballast is out and needs, well, it's, it's in bad shape and it needs to be replaced. So rather than doing that, I am actually going to convert this shop light to LED power. I'm a big fan of LEDs. Fluorescent tubes take a long time to warm up. Uh, this room currently is, is being illuminated by fluorescent lights. I've had to leave them on for several hours to get them fully up to, to full power. Uh, and LEDs are instant on. Fluorescent tubes have a, another problem in that they contain mercury, uh, which is not good for you to breathe. It's not good for you in general. Uh, it also, the, uh, the uh, phosphorus that is on the inside of the tubes, which actually makes them glow, uh, is also bad for you. They're glass, they're fragile. You have to be very careful when disposing of them, and they're not readily recyclable. LEDs, on the other hand, uh, have uh, low amounts, uh, reduced amounts. They've been working on reducing the amounts of heavy metals and other hazardous chemicals. Production of them is much less hazardous. They are more efficient than fluorescent tubes, uh, and we'll get into the efficiencies later. Uh, these are 40-watt, uh, 4-foot fluorescent tubes, so this uh, fixture consumes 80 watts to produce the light that it makes. Uh, the new one, uh, once it gets converted to LED power, will be per, uh, consuming less than 25 watts, so that's really good. Um, again, I'm not a greeny weenie, but I like saving money and I don't like wasting energy. So here we have how we are going to do this. Uh, we'll be taking the guts out of the, uh, out of the fixture and replacing the glowing elements with LED lights on a tape. Look at that! Uh, these are uh, set up in cells of three uh, that are with uh, cut points that you can have in it. They don't, they don't flex side to side very well. It's very flexible this way, but not side to side. So it doesn't turn a corner, but you can, you can cut them at these intervals. Let's see if I can show that off uh, well. Uh, you, you cut them directly through the copper pads. The copper, these uh, installments are every... Uh, it's roughly five centimeters. Actually, I think it's probably set to be almost exactly five centimeters. This reel here is 16 feet, which means I should be able to get four laps on this. Uh, and actually, I have another piece left over from a previous project, which is what gave me the idea to do this. Uh, and uh, I should be able to add two more segments, so I should be able to have six passes across this and get considerably more light than these light bulbs ever produced. Uh, these tape reels, I got this from Amazon, uh, so I, I forget who the vendor was. Uh, they have a uh, little coaxial plug. <laughs> Oddly enough, this one's defective. It, they're, they're supposed to come with uh, a male and female, and in, in this case it comes with two males. Um, so uh, that's going to be interesting. I'll be re dealing with that later. Um, <clears throat> but it's not really a problem. Uh, we'll be using one of those in the project. So I have the other end. Uh, these are actually the females. The, the male femaleness is determined by the center pin, by the hot pin. Uh, so these, although they, the big body inserts into this one, it's actually considered to be the female uh, end. Uh, these came from Radio Shack uh, called size N, which doesn't tell you what the physical size is. I do believe it's 5.5 millimeters outside, 2.5 millimeters inside. I think that's what the size is. It doesn't tell me. But uh, these were inexpensive from uh, Radio Shack, so it's not really a problem. Actually, it's going to, the, the biggest problem is going to be hooking up the wires to them. This here is going to be the heart of the, the matter. 
Uh, this is the power converter from 110 volts AC to 12 volts DC in order to power this. Uh, this module will actually run from, uh, as it says here, let's see if you can you can read that, from 100 volts uh, to 240 volts AC. That's a pretty broad range and we'll give out 12 volts DC at up to uh, 2.1 amps or uh, what it calls 25 uh, watts uh, and that will be plenty for what we're running uh, with this and that will go in place of the ballast. We'll be using the standard switch that was with it. We'll be using the 110 volt connection so it's going to be working the exact same way that it used to. Just pull the cord and it'll turn on but it'll turn on instantly and then we need some hookup wire. This also came from Radio Shack. This is 22 gauge stranded, which is approximately the right size to hook up to these pads. The, that's going to be the tough part here is, is actually soldering to these uh, pads and they're going to be cut in half so they'll be even smaller. We'll show that uh, in a little bit and getting the plus and minus right. But we'll do that at each end of each pass uh, so that we can make multiple passes through this and light up the whole thing. Uh, also being, we will need uh, our soldering station. Uh, if you're going to do many projects, please invest in a decent soldering station. Don't just settle for the $10 soldering irons from Radio Shack or <laughs> from your local big box store. Please. Uh, I, I went through, in, uh, in an electronic school, I went through uh, five or six $10 uh, soldering irons in a year and finally broke down and bought this soldering station for $140. I've had it for over 25 years uh, and it worked perfectly for me. Uh, this one's made by Weller. They make some new ones now that are even better. This, this one adjusts temperature by changing the tip out. So if you want a different temperature or different, uh, you have to buy a new tip. Uh, you can also get new sizes for them. The newer ones that are, uh, there, there, there's a newer model that actually is adjustable in temperature so you can, you can run that. Uh, and, and they're $99.95 uh, at, at many electronic supply stores. Gigaparts is one of them uh, that, that you can get them from DigiKey and, and several others. Or Fry's Electronics, they have them too. Uh, we have some high quality solder here. Uh, that's, that's going to be necessary. This is actually a very fine size uh, in order to match up with the, uh, the very fine pads and the fine wire. You don't want to use uh, solder the size of your finger to uh, solder to these little pads, so you need to get some small size uh, wire. Let's see, what's the diameter? 0.15. Uh, is the diameter of this 0.15 inches 0.015 excuse me not 0.15 that would be way too big now uh, we'll just need some scissors wire strippers screwdriver and in just a minute uh, we'll get set up and start taking this uh, this fixture apart uh, so that we can look inside and decide what we're going to do with uh, the various pieces <laughs> 